Hi everybody, my name is Josh Rosen, and I'm not graduating this semester. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I wasn't even a journalism major until a year ago. I came to Biola double majoring in English and philosophy, and I was so sure about what I wanted to do after I graduated with those two degrees. I wanted to go get a PhD in philosophy, and I wanted to teach at a college while I wrote books, some creative, some academic, but the problem was that I didn't really like philosophy as much as I thought I did. And my fear that I just wasn't meant to pursue those goals anymore was overshadowed by my fear that I was somehow failing or letting down all my friends, my family, and my coworkers that were so proud of me back home. And it took me a long time to finally admit that I didn't see a fulfilling future in those majors. The final nail in the coffin, I wanted to do creative writing, but there is, or was anyways, only one creative writing prose class in that entire English major. And upon taking it, I realized just how unbelievably miserable I was. And I decided to find another major, which of course led me here to Biola's Journalism and Integrated Media track with a concentration in writing and publishing. Uh, I actually think I have a slide about this. Never learned the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, but then I had another problem. I had only three semesters left before I was supposed to graduate, and I simply couldn't afford a single semester more. That meant that I had to graduate spring 2016, this semester, I had to graduate. But after reviewing my degree audit, I wasn't so sure that I could. I met with Dr. Longenow for advising, and we came up with this crazy plan that included all these summer courses and a really bloated uh, spring schedule. And instead of the pan, sorry, um, but then he, he looked at me and he just said, Josh, I really think you need to take an extra semester. And I thought I was gonna panic. I knew that was coming, and I was, I was expecting the panic to rise up, and instead, I felt this great wave of relief. An extra semester meant more money that I would be paying to the school, money that I didn't have, but it also meant more time. It gave me breathing room to think about my life after graduation. Long now told me it wasn't just about graduating, it's about graduating sane, and graduating with a career path that I was passionate about. That advice, combined with my experience in philosophy, led me here. I'm not graduating, my portfolio is still fairly small, but I have the time to decide and focus on a career path. I need to be more patient with finding my interests leaving college than I was coming into college. And part of being more patient with my career interests includes thinking about the future of journalism as a whole, and a, fu a future that I will be a part of by choice or by force. With that, I, I was going to speak about three things, but then I found out I only have 15 minutes. So we're going to skip through some of my other stuff, but I'm going to talk about some of those points real quickly. But the main point is where journalism is now and where I think journalism is and should be going. Um, coming from creative writing, I knew that I want to be in a position where style is appreciated just as much as substance. That's something you should know about me. My love of creative approaches to media made me realize that I don't want to write just hard, objective news. That's not me. And some of the lessons I learned while being copy editor of the Biolan made me realize that no matter what form journalism takes, it has to be a selfless industry. Now, um, my internship, my only internship, uh, the OC Register, uh, I drive to that office three times a week. Uh, I work with Jeff Miller in the features department, but I came in at a bad time. For one thing, they were just bought out. The first round of layoffs hit just days before I started. And for another thing, a new company policy instituted by the new owners uh, made the atmosphere much less conversational, um, much, uh, much less friendly. Uh, and for yet another thing, the annual Best of OC magazine is just starting production now, so everybody's extra busy. Now, not to say that my time there hasn't been fruitful, but working at the Register, I, I've seen everything I love and everything I fear about written journalism. The people who work there are interesting. The stories are always fresh. But we, and we provide important service to the people of Southern California, but I see stagnation. The newspapers aren't making money, and management is not willing or able to adapt the business model to fit an ever paperless world. I mean, just look at their website. I don't know if you guys have ever been on that. It's a mess. And there's always this, this fear of layoffs. Every, everyone is just like palpable. And this brings me to my next topic, where journalism is now. I got some uh, statistics for you guys we're going to go through. Now, where do, journal, uh, where, do, where do newspapers get their money? They're, they're getting it from circulation and ad revenue, right? Um, 
Well, if you look at these two over here on the top left and, and the middle, um, those are, that's the ad revenue uh, over the past several years. Uh, the farthest right being, I think, 2014 on that chart and 2013 on this one. Uh, and it's, it's going down considerably. And the reason why is because of this chart, which is um, it's ad block. I don't know if any of you guys use Adblock Plus. Google is so threatened by Adblock Plus that they paid almost a billion dollars to, uh, to be on their whitelist um, so that they, their, their ads on their websites are no longer blocked. It's a huge problem that is eating into a lot of our profits. Um, and this chart right here just shows the continued costs uh, of, of Adblock and other such services. If I had more time, I could show you those sites uh, more in detail. Um, now, even the most annoying ads, like the ones that pop up on YouTube, you know, the ones that make you wait 15 minutes, they're, uh, they're blocked by this. There's really nothing that really gets past these. And on top of all this, news readership is steadily dropping across all ages, education levels, income, and race. Now, that could be for a number of reasons, but I have a theory. And that's because news just isn't engaging enough for our brains anymore, oddly enough. Uh, Stephen Johnson, who, who wrote a book called Everything Bad is Good for You, compared the plot threads of a modern popu popular television show to the plot threads of a popular television show from 30 years earlier. Whether or not the content of our TV is getting smarter, our brains crave stimulation. And as you can see, our brains are getting much more stimulation now. And the truth is that news falls more into the latter category, where we're following a single narrative thread. And that's probably not going to be something that we can really change. But it is something to think about. Now, um, it's generally been agreed upon for a long time that news like most industries, is going to become increasingly web-based. But that doesn't matter if nobody's reading the newspaper. And the people that are reading the newspaper, they aren't generating money for the newspaper because they're using Adblock. The truth is that none of us might have careers in journalism anymore, which is a sobering thought as I'm about to leave Viola next semester. Um, so the way I see it, we have to figure out a way to solve two big problems, reader adoption and adherence and revenue, and I think I might have a way. Uh, I'm about to throw out a new word for you guys. It's called gamification. Uh, now, what is gamification? Gamification takes all of our collected knowledge of human-focused pleasure collected from the past 30 years of video game design, uh, or more simply, just play, and applies it to the boring, menial tasks that we have to do, you know, the work stuff. In the past, these work tasks have been largely function focused. But the thing is that games aren't about completing a certain function. Games are about human enjoyment. Everyone has experienced gamification on some level. Most of you guys have heard of the, the cleanup game. You know, like a lot, a lot of teachers do that in, the, in, their, in their classrooms. They, they make it a game somehow by, you know, they'll, they'll sing or, you know, they'll say it's like, hey, you know, it's like you get a point for putting this away. It's not really making it a game. They just kind of tell us a game. And that's gamification at probably the most basic level. But it gets so much further. Now, you're probably all wondering at this really confusing chart up here. This is called octalysis. Um, a really smart guy named Yukai Chow has developed a robust system of gamification that can be applied to almost anything. And it starts by understanding different quote unquote core drives that motivate us for play. These core drives are meaning, empowerment, social influence, unpredictability, Avoidance, scarcity, ownership, and accomplishment. And that's actually just the first level. Octalysis is really complicated uh, the further you get into it. There's four levels of it. And when applied correctly, you can actually, it, it's, it's kind of an a all-in-one template that you could use to apply gamification principles to any medium. Not, ju not just news. I mean, you, you could apply it to uh, cleaning up. You could apply it to you know, uh, air traffic controlling. <laughs> um, and I could probably give you guys some, um, some examples of that uh, during the Q&A session, if you're interested. Uh, for now, a good example, I think, is Duolingo. Duolingo is this, uh, this really cool linguistics app. It teaches you another language. Um, but it just feels like you're playing games. And, and the games aren't necessarily fun, but they're interesting. And, and they provide the stimulation that your brain desires. And it keeps it going. 
Now, the first, me uh, the first epic meaning and calling. We all like to think that we're part of something bigger or that we're uniquely equipped to solve certain problems. Beginner's luck is a really good example of this. It's like you, you, you kind of get that feeling where it's like, man, I'm really good at this. And it's like the first time you've ever done it. And it keeps you playing. Development and accomplishment. Uh, the word challenge here is really important. Because when you, a development or an accomplishment doesn't mean anything unless it was a challenge to accomplish it. Empowerment of creativity and feedback. People like having multiple solutions to a single problem. Uh, a good example of a game that uses this is, is Dark Souls. It's one I've been playing a lot recently. Um, at any given moment, you could kill an enemy in any sort of different ways. But you could apply the same thing here. You know, it's like I, I, I could have, you know, I could have made Prezi. I could have done a magic trick. I mean, there's a lot of different ways I can keep you guys engaged, and that's the solution here. Is, is, and that's the problem here, is trying to keep you guys engaged on this topic. Ownership and possession. People just like, you know, they, they, they like to make things that they have better. Um, social influence and relatedness. This, is, this includes all the social elements that drive people. Mentorship, acceptance, social responses. Um, I'm going to skip past uh, the next couple just for time. But remember, the goal is to develop a gamified version of journalism that increases reader adoption, adherence, and somehow makes more money for the newspaper. Now also understand that gamified journalism doesn't have to be a game per se. Gam gamification isn't about making games but about motivating us in the way that we're motivated through thoughtful play. Um, it, it's, a, it's a positive reinforcement. One core drive that stands out almost immediately for uh, application towards journalism is epic meaning and calling. The idea here is we, we find things within, uh, within a certain thing. Like, uh, we, we find core drives within, um, within Octalysis that apply to certain mediums, and we find um, we find how we can motivate them through that. Epic meaning and calling is a really easy one that applies to journalism because as, as truth tellers, as giving voice to the voiceless, exposing corruption, that's, that's about the most epic meaning and calling a person could have. Now, what if, uh, what if that epic meaning and calling wasn't just for the journalist, but what if we included the readers in that? If you think about what tools a journalist needs, most of them are built into our extremely common smartphones. What if we designed our news apps so that an everyday person could contribute to the news? People are doing it anyways. People are, like, like when there's like these riots in Ferguson, people are videotaping on their phones. And then it ends up on Facebook, it ends up on YouTube, but, and then eventually it ends up on the news. But what, what if it came straight from the news? What if on your news app you could <laughs> just stream and somebody online could go and click on your phone and could see that event from your vantage point? What if they could click around to other people? What if, what if we could combine all these people who, who are potential journalists in, into a single database like that? Now, there are more people who are not journalists than people who are. We can take such advantage to be in, in more places at once. And also, we can save money because we're not, uh, we don't have to have as many people of our own out there on the field. Now, what, uh, the second one, uh, accomplishment. This is really easy. This is just like badges, leaderboards, or rewards. Those are built into almost any gamification system. And it's really easy to keep people motivated by giving them some kind of reward. What if top contributors got free subscriptions? What if, uh, what if it was something more enticing, like maybe a cash prize every month, every week? All the while, we save our newsroom money because we don't have to send uh, multiple teams out to those events. Other consumers could be motivated by the first drive to organize and edit the footage in a way that we already see motivating wiki editors to organize and edit. Uh, another core drive that could be useful is empowerment of creativity and feedback. Photo print and broadcast journalism is inherently creative. Who can cover the news most creatively? Who can get the most unique shot? I'm not trying to right now to define what exactly gamified journalism would be. Like this is not like I'm not defining rules for you guys. What I'm trying to do is just get you thinking about what, how gamification could be applied to journalism. Now, the more core drives that we can implement into our gamified journalism, the more ways to play. That attracts a wider swath of users. That keeps people playing longer because there are multiple roles to fulfill and ways to accomplish their goals. Keeping players in allows us more options for revenue, such as less intrusive ads, special features that can be earned through play or flat out paid for if they don't want to earn them, and by saving us money because the news organization becomes responsible for covering less news. 
Furthermore, as game makers, we can set the rules, which means that we can design our game to encourage factual, objective journalism, so we don't have to sacrifice our values either. Now, in conclusion, journalism is changing. We're losing readers, we're losing money, and I'm not sure that we'll make it to the next stage of journalism without losing a lot of professional journalists. Social media has changed the way the world thinks, and the special skills and tools that we have are becoming less and less special daily. I think that we can shape our future, however. I think that with the right system, we can ensure the survival of our news agencies while also moving towards a more open system of journalism. And whatever that looks like, we have to remember that journalism is not, and never has been, about us. It's about fulfilling our call to shine a light, expose corruption, be a watchdog, provide comfort, tell the truth, share stories, give voices, and a lot of other things that make God very happy. My journalism career is not about me, but about God and about others. I am very proud of whatever the future holds for us. Uh, I am now opening it up to Q&A. Uh, 